Hello, everybody. Welcome to Ed Sports Network again. Nick here. We have another interview for you guys today with Temple men's basketball player Ty Strickland. Ty, thanks for joining us on the site during quarantine. We have this nice, you know, series of interviews going on. We really appreciate you coming on. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Of course. No problem. Ready to get into some basketball here with you. I'm sure you're dying to talk some basketball. I know the viewers are dying to hear some more about your career, how you got to Temple, your journey to the NCAA. So we usually like to start with the high school career here. And I know that you've led your high school teams to three straight semifinals. In your senior year of high school, you had a great season. You averaged 17.7 rebounds and three assists. So you originally started at Wisconsin. Now you're at Temple. Your senior year of high school, to have a senior year like that, a very successful senior year, and then also in your high school career, to lead your teams to three straight semifinals, how does that give you the confidence kind of to take your game to the next level in the NCAA? Um, really, it's, it's about momentum and confidence. Mm-hmm. I mean, coming off my senior year, you know, I wasn't super highly recruited before then. And once that happened, you know, a switch turned on for me. And it was just like, all right, I can really do this. Mm-hmm. And then... You know, being able to go to Wisconsin was great for me, confidence-wise. And, you know, I just took the momentum and ran with it. I mean, that's excellent right there. And, and Wisconsin and Temple, obviously both very good basketball schools. So you got to have that confidence. And I know in your first season at Wisconsin, you mentioned how that gave you some confidence. I want to go back to a game in Wisconsin on the home floor. It was against Savannah State. I'm sure you remember this one. 5-7 of seven from the field, 14 points, 6 assists. What does it feel like to get in a groove like that at a school where they're known for their basketball team, amazing talent at that school, and you get in a groove like that, what does that you know mean for you to see that you can play at this next level, you can play D1 basketball in a great conference like that, and you can actually be successful? Um, you know, it, it's, it's a special feeling, really. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, coming off of that game, that was really the first time I really got to get a chance to get on the court with the guys and then you know for me to perform like that was was a testament just to how much confidence and how much work I was putting in and you know just to see it pay off in that way was 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 a good feeling yeah I mean you looked great out there in that game it was after a loss too so it was one of those games where you guys needed to come back and you did just that got the win over Savannah State and now that you're at Temple um, I know that it's Philadelphia. I mean, great sports atmosphere. I'm from Boston. I, I really can't talk too much about the professional sports teams there because that, that might get into some bad blood with the Sixers. I don't want I don't want to get there. But you're headed to Philly, bigger sports city than Madison. Madison still has a great atmosphere, but Philadelphia, there's just something about it. What are you kind of looking – you obviously sat out last year with the NCAA eligibility rules, but – What are you kind of looking forward to playing in a city like Philadelphia in front of Temple's fans? Um, You know, we we, we really look forward to bringing that broad street toughness back Mm -hmm. to Temple. You know, Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like we we want to give the fans, give the school something to root for, uh, something to be proud of. You know, Coach McKee has has been Philadelphia all his life, Mm -hmm. and he's really just instilled that in us. And that's the culture he wants to bring. And that's, that's, that's what we want to do this year and any of the years coming up. For sure. And I would imagine you're eager to get back out there on the floor after having a season off. And I know, you know, obviously you spent last year with the team getting to know them and stuff. How how'd you kind of build that team chemistry last year in a season where you couldn't unfortunately play, but you still got to build that team chemistry for this upcoming season. So what ways did you kind of do that, kind of build a relationship with these guys that you're going to be playing with next year? Really, it was a lot in practice. Um, mm-hmm. You know, obviously, I wasn't I wasn't able to play, so I was on the scout team for most of the year, playing with the guys who may not have gotten as many minutes as the starters. And it started there. Mm-hmm. My, my leadership skills, uh, being able to lead lead a team on the court, started there, and pushing those guys so that we can make the starters better, make the guys that are playing better, in order for the team to get better. And I think that 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 is where the leadership started and you know Mm -hmm. guys tend to start to rally around that i mean yeah that's that's big and 
I'd say the one good thing about, you know, sitting out last year, get the time to reflect a little bit, get the time to see how the team works, offense works, defense works, and you still have three years of eligibility left. So what are some goals that you have for your own personal development as well as some team goals for the future of Temple? Um, you know, personal goals, really just to be the best Ty Strickland that I can be. You know, mm-hmm. I don't really really think of putting any personal goals in. You know, a season is very long. Mm-hmm. So I know if I do what I'm supposed to do, do what I know I can do, then the outcome will be the outcome. In terms of team goals, you know, I definitely want to finish in the top half or top thir- one third of the conference. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, make a run in the conference tournament and make an NCAA tournament appearance. That is definitely a team goal. For sure. And I know Temple, you know, they've had a lot of success in the past. You guys got a lot of potential and talent on this team now. Could be a very bright future. And I know that th- this is interesting right here. Your dad spent 17 seasons in the NBA, and I know he's had to have an influence on you growing up as a kid, where you are now. So how has he kind of affected you, and how has he made you fall in love with the game of basketball? Um, I mean, obviously just growing up, watching him play, mm-hmm. watching him be around basketball when he's a, when he was a coach, that's just something I grew up wanting to do. I wanted to be like him and follow in his footsteps. And, you know, getting to see just the elite level talent that he was mm-hmm. and that was around him wherever he was, you know, it gave me big aspirations. And I got to know, like, not everyone has a dad that's an NBA player. I mean, that's for sure. Is there more pressure on you kind of growing up? Do you feel kind of, not not forced, but a little more, you know, motivated to go towards basketball among other sports? Because I feel like, you know, there might be in some situations some push from someone who's a professional athlete on their kid. Did you ever feel any pressure to kind of head towards basketball and pursue that as like a career choice? Uh, no, not really. Uh, at least not from my dad. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously, the expectation is, oh, your dad played in the NBA. You should be a great NBA or a great basketball player. Well, I mean, sure, but if I don't want to do that, my dad's not going to force me to do that. But, you know, for me, it was I got to see plenty of guys go through the college ranks, go to the pros, and I was like, I wanted to be one of those guys. For sure. I mean, you're certainly on the right path now. Definitely gotten farther than than most of us, so you're headed in the right direction. Um, And now, there was an interesting story about you done by the Temple News that I know my team and I were looking through. And it dove a little bit into the impact that Kobe Bryant had on you as a kid. And I know back in January when the, the tragedy happened, I mean, the sports world was in shock. And I mean, I'm sure you realize this more than most, but I remember just kind of walking outside one day and I just remember the streets were just quiet and it's like, yeah. it's like everybody kind of knew what had happened and it was just kind of this universal moment of sadness and just where do we go from here? But as someone who met Kobe a couple times and actually got to interact with him and has obviously implemented a part of him in your game, I mean, what did Kobe mean to you as a player and what did that interaction with Kobe kind of mean to you and what have you taken, you know, from it with you to this day? I mean, really, that's probably, you know, one of the most clear interactions in my in my memory. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I remember after the Memphis Grizzlies game going in the into the back and walking around back there and seeing all the reporters and then you hear just a loud, booming voice. That's a magician with the ball right there talking about my dad, and all of a sudden it's Kobe Bryant. So for me, like that, that that's the most clear, ingrained moment that I even have from that time period. And remembering that and remembering who he was as a basketball player and what he became outside of basketball, that's 100% what I, what I would like to be. That's, you know... I'd like to implement that stuff into me because he he, he left an imprint on basketball, mm-hmm. but he also left an imprint on people outside of basketball. No doubt about it. I mean, I think there's such a big cultural impact. I mean, I know it was just, as I said, completely quiet in the streets. And it was, it was something I know that 
we've talked about a lot of times on the site, but for the majority of the people out there, none of us really knew Kobe personally, you know, but it felt like a family member had passed. I think that's really how it felt. And it was just such a, such a bizarre, I mean, I can't even explain it. It's one of the times in my life, I think, where I've just felt lost. I mean, I think that's the best way to really describe it, just lost. So I think it's absolutely great that you're carrying on that Mamba mentality in your game, as so many players are, that next generation that you're a part of is carrying part of his game. So his game is definitely going to live on forever. And I think that's special. That just shows you how great Kobe was, how great Kobe is, and how he's carrying on the legacy in this new generation of the kids that grew up watching him. And I got I got to know, I got to know, when you heard that voice talking to your dad, turned around, it was Kobe Bryant. I mean, as a kid, are you just stars? Did, did you have the courage to talk to him? Because I feel like I, I would have shied away. I mean, I don't remember the entire conversation, but mm-hmm. knowing myself, I doubt I said a word. Yeah, see, I, no way I said a word. I'm with you on that one. I don't think I would have said a word either. So I think I think you're in the majority with that. Because I, I don't know. I think I would have just froze, probably passed out. Would have had to be airlifted out of there or something. I'm, I'm glad that... Um, I, I didn't have to embarrass myself there. I don't think I would have talked to him either. So I think you're in the right right there. But anyway, to wrap up here, Ty, um, again, thanks so much for joining us. But for the future here, I mean, where's Temple's outlook? You know, what are you looking forward to? Um, got a brand new team that you're going to be playing with next year. And you guys should be excited. Hopefully basketball gets back soon. I know we we're talking a little bit about that before we got on the interview here. But what are you really looking forward to at Temple and just the overall Temple community? Man, I, honestly, I'm just really looking forward to getting back on the court. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's been a full year sitting out. You know, didn't really do as much as I really wanted to my freshman year. But you know, I'm I'm just really looking forward to playing basketball again and uh, getting to play in front of Philadelphia in front of Temple fans. Uh, it, it it means a lot, and I'm just I'm just ready to ready to get things back started. Hey, I hear you there. Season right around the corner. Hopefully, it'll be here before we know it. But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Ty Strickland, Temple Men's Basketball. Ty, again, cannot thank you enough for having you on the site. We really do appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. No problem. You guys can follow Ty on Twitter. We will put his uh, link right down in the description for you guys so you can follow his career. And you guys can also follow news and updates from Temple Men's Basketball. We'll put the link down there again. Ty, take care. Hopefully everything is good with you during this pandemic. And hopefully we'll talk to you in the future, man. Yes, sir. Thank you. No problem. Have a good one.